Tonight's lesson is Lesson 7.4, Subtracting Fractions Using Models. Our essential question is how can you subtract fractions with like denominators using models? Please turn in your Go Math book to Lesson 7.4. For question number one, you can see that this whole is cut into five equal parts. One-fifth, two-fifths, three-fifths, four-fifths would fit right here, and five-fifths would be right here, which equals one whole. However, as you can see, we're starting with four-fifths. Therefore, we have one-fifth, two-fifths, three-fifths, and four-fifths. Now, if we were to subtract one-fifth using a model, we can draw it where we're taking one-fifth away. So in this example, you can see that they made it look like they were cutting out the one-fifth, and they're just drawing an arrow to show that you're taking it away from the four-fifths. Therefore, four-fifths minus this one-fifth leaves us with three-fifths remaining. Another way to draw the model is that you can show, for this example, three-fourths, one-fourth, two-fourths, three-fourths. Now remember, four-fourths would make the extra fourth right here. However, we're only starting out with three-fourths, and that's why you only see three-fourths shaded in right here out of one hole. But anyways, if you had three-fourths and you want to remove one-fourth away, another way you can write it is to show a one-fourth directly before, below the other one-fourth. And this portion right here shows us what's remaining. You can see that two-fourths is what's left. So you can draw it this way. And this model shows three-fourths minus one-fourth will leave me with two-fourths remaining. Now another way to check it is to keep my denominator the same and only subtract my numerator. So 3 minus 1 is 2 and you leave your denominator the same as 2 fourths. So for question number 3, you don't have a model drawn there for you, however I've created one for you. So go ahead and look at this model that I have. Here's my one hole and if it were cut into sixths, I would have 1, 6, 2, 6, 3, 6, 4, 6, 5, 6, and the 6, 6 would be right here. However, according to my question, I only have 5, 6 that I'm dealing with. So here are my 5, 6. Now if I want to subtract 1, 6 from my 5, 6, I can do what that first model showed us. You can make it look like you're cutting out 1, 6 and taking 1 away. And that would leave us with four sixths remaining. That's one way you can do it. Or you can do something simple like this. I can look at my five six and I can remove one six by just crossing out one six. And you can still see that I have four six remaining. That's another way you can do it. So let's go ahead and take a look at number four. For number four I showed you the example like they show on question number two. For this one, you can see that I have seven eighths that I'm starting with. Of course, I don't have eight eighths shaded in because I'm only starting with seven eighths. But remember, eight eighths would equal one whole. So if I were to subtract one eighth from my seven eighths, here's the one eighths right here. Do you see that? So whatever is left over is this remaining portion. So let's go ahead and count it. 1 eighth, 2 eighths, 3 eighths, 4 eighths, 5 eighths, 6 eighths. With this model, you can see that 7 eighths minus 1 eighths would equal 6 eighths. And you can check it because, you know, keep your denominator the same and just subtract your numerator. 7 minus 1 is 6. So therefore, your answer should be 6 eighths. Now for number 5, you can see that my whole is right here and it's cut into thirds because if I have one hole and I want to take away two thirds that means I have to cut this hole into three parts one third two thirds three thirds equals one hole so here are my three thirds right here one third two third and three thirds and now this is what I'll be looking at this really is one hole also known as three thirds so really up here in my question, I can rewrite this and say 3 thirds minus 2 thirds. That might be a little easier to understand. And now I'm going to take away 2 thirds. 
One way I can do that is I can just circle these two thirds, cross them out, and maybe show an arrow showing that I'm going to remove them. That's one way you can do it. And as you can see, what's left over is going to be one third right there. So the answer would be 3 thirds minus 2 thirds equals 1 third. So on number 6, the question says 8 tenths minus 2 tenths. So with my model, I have drawn out 8 tenths. Here are my 8 tenths. Notice how this would be 9 tenths and 10 tenths to equal 1 whole. However, we don't have those because we only have 8 tenths. Now if I want to subtract 2 tenths from my 8 tenths, I can just remove 2 tenths. So I'm just going to cross those 2 tenths out. And so the answer is going to be, what is not crossed out? I can see I have 1 tenth, 2 tenths, 3 tenths, 4 tenths, 5 tenths, 6 tenths with my model. So 8 tenths minus 2 tenths is 6 tenths according to my model. So for questions 7 and 8, go ahead and pause the video, and I want you to answer these two questions on your own. Please draw a model to show why, because this is the lesson on subtracting using models. Go ahead and press pause. For question number 7, I went ahead and created 3 fourths right here. 1 fourth, 2 fourths, 3 fourths. There's my 3 fourths. Now if I want to subtract 1 fourth from the 3 fourths, I'm going to go ahead and make a little cutting mark to show that I'm going to just cut it away, take away the arrow, and as you can see what's left over are 2 fourths. So 3 fourths minus 1 fourth is 2 fourths, also known as 1 half of a whole. Let's go ahead and look at question 8 now. Now on question number 8, you might have looked at it and said that it looks like it's improper. Well, that's okay. It is improper, but you can still make it a fraction because it is a true fraction. 7 6 would have to look like a model as one whole and one more 6. I'll go ahead and show you what I would draw right here. I would, And if you didn't draw a model, go ahead and draw it with me right now. I'm going to create one whole. Now this one whole, of course, is cut into 6 because that's what my denominator says. So I'm going to cut it in half first, then I'm going to cut each of my half into thirds, and that's going to create six six. Let's go ahead and show why. One six, two six, three six, four six, five six, and six six. However, according to my question, it says I have to have seven six. So let's go ahead and make one more sixth right here and I'm going to go ahead and label it as 1 6. All together now I have 7 6 and now I can just subtract 5 6 from my 7 6. I'm going to just make X's over 5 6. 1 6, 2 6, 3 6, 4 6, 5 6. So according to my model you can see that 7 6 minus 5 6 leaves me with 2 6. And of course by checking it you can see that I keep my denominator the same and I just subtract the numerator. So let's go ahead and take a look down at our problem solving. For question number nine, it says, Ina is making trail mix. She buys the items shown in the table. How many more pounds of pretzels than raisins does she buy? Well, I'm gonna go ahead and underline my clue words. How many more than lets me know I need to subtract. We're looking for how many more pounds of pretzels which will be 7 eighths, then raisins, which will be 2 eighths. And because I'm going to subtract, my question is 7 eighths minus 2 eighths. Go ahead and write your answer for that right there on your line. Okay, for this one, I went ahead and drew a model down here for you to look at. Here's my hole. And here are 7 eighths. Of course, if I were to go to the end, it would be 8 eighths. But this is not one whole. It's just 7 eighths. Now, there's 7 eighths pound of pretzels. And we want to find the difference between um, that and raisins. So right below here, I'm going to go ahead and just create 2 eighths. 1 eighth, 2 eighths. Now, this is going to be my raisins. 
and the seven-eighths will be my pretzels. So the question says, how many more pounds of pretzels than raisins does she buy? Well, my difference is going to be this portion that remains. So let's go ahead and count it up. One-eighth, two-eighths, three-eighths, four-eighths, five-eighths would be the difference. So you should have said seven-eighths minus two-eighths is five-eighths. Now let's go ahead and look at our last question on this page. Okay, so for this one it says, how many more pounds of granola than banana chips does she buy? Let's go ahead and set up our equation. Our granola is 5 eighths, and our banana chips is 3 eighths. And because we wanna know how many more than, you're gonna subtract, and you always put the larger fraction first. Whenever you subtract, you always put the bigger number first. 5 eighths minus 3 eighths will equal 2 eighths. Now I know it's to be true because you keep your denominator the same when you're subtracting with like denominators and you always subtract only the numerator. And this shows why. I'm going to go ahead and quickly create 5 eighths, 1 eighth, 2 eighths, 3 eighths, 4 eighths, 5 eighths. I'm going to label each one as an eighth just to show you the model. And if I were to remove 3 eighths just to show the difference, I'm going to cross out 1 eighth, 2 eighths, 3 eighths. And as you can see, I have two eighths remaining. Okay, so for your homework questions tonight, you're going to look at questions one and two on the back side of this homework sheet. Number one says, Lee reads for three-fourths of an hour in the morning and two-fourths of an hour in the afternoon. How much longer does Lee read in the morning than in the afternoon? Go ahead and set up your equation and answer that. And then for number two, the model is already drawn for you. It says, which equation does this model below represent? Now remember, this is one whole, and it's cut into what type of pieces? Think about what is being removed, and pick the correct choice that you think that would be it. Please don't forget to assess yourself also. If you're a novice, you're just starting to learn this and you don't really understand this, go ahead and place a one on the corner of your homework sheet. If you're an apprentice, you're starting to get it but you still need coaching, place a two. Practitioner, you can do it by yourself but you might get stuck. And number four is expert. You understand it well and you could teach it to someone else. Go ahead and label yourself how you feel as of this point. Remember, in class, we're gonna practice some more. And here are your two homework questions. Go ahead and work these out, answer them. Do the following questions, three through six as well, on your paper, and we'll check those together in class as well. Have a great night. Bye-bye.